Online, magnesium oxide often gets a super bad rap. It's usually labeled as the least effective form of magnesium due to its supposed low absorption rate, and many people tell you to avoid it completely. But if you actually read the studies on it and understand the biochemistry behind what your body does with magnesium oxide, you will quickly see that in one very specific sense, it's actually the best form of magnesium. All right, to explain what I mean, let's talk about what magnesium oxide is and why it's usually said to be the worst form of magnesium supplements. Magnesium oxide is magnesium bound to oxygen, which happens when other magnesium types are heated to a very high temperature. It is fairly cheap and because of that it's found in many supermarket magnesium supplements. Magnesium oxide is usually criticized because it's considered poorly absorbed compared to other forms like magnesium citrate or glycinate. One of the most commonly referenced studies used to criticize magnesium oxide comes from Firos and Graeber and involved 16 volunteers. The volunteers were given four different supplements two organic magnesium supplements, magnesium aspartate and magnesium lactate, and two non-organic ones, oxide and chloride. And then their urine was analyzed for magnesium levels. In the study, those taking magnesium oxide excreted less magnesium on average, leading to the conclusion that magnesium oxide had a very low absorption rate of only 4%. But two things are often forgotten here. One, half of the volunteers excreted similar or even higher levels of magnesium with magnesium oxide compared to the other magnesium forms. So the end result was really the average value with quite a bit of fluctuation between the participants. And two, peeing out more magnesium does not necessarily mean your body absorbs more of it. More on this in a second. Basically what the internet then did was cite this study or a similar one telling everyone to avoid magnesium oxide and how bad it is. But this is misleading and to explain why, let's talk about the biochemistry behind magnesium oxide. The magnesium oxygen bonds are broken down very slowly in your GI tract. That means the magnesium is released more gradually into the bloodstream. This helps prevent a rapid spike of blood magnesium. With more bioavailable forms, the magnesium is absorbed more quickly. For example, magnesium glycinate is a really bioavailable form. But the body tightly regulates your blood magnesium levels, and it actually doesn't like these sudden spikes. If magnesium levels rise too quickly, the kidneys will excrete the excess to maintain the electrolyte balance in your blood. This means that more bioavailable forms of magnesium are often quickly eliminated through your urine. What really matters is how much magnesium actually reaches your tissue, where it is stored and where the biochemistry with magnesium happens. Magnesium oxide is very beneficial in this regard because like I just said, it breaks down very slowly, providing a steady release of magnesium without sudden spikes. This leads to less magnesium being peed out and more being retained in the body. So the researchers assumption that higher magnesium excretion means higher magnesium uptake is only true for the blood, but not the tissue, which is what actually matters. Okay, let's now talk about why in one very specific regard, magnesium oxide is actually the best form of magnesium. And that is in terms of magnesium concentration. Most supplements have around 10 to 30% of elemental magnesium. Magnesium oxide contains the highest percentage of elemental magnesium at around 60%. This means you get more magnesium per pill, which is often overlooked when people focus only on absorption rates. When you take magnesium oxide, you're getting a larger dose of magnesium with fewer pills compared to the other forms like magnesium glycinate or citrate. This can be especially helpful for people who don't want to swallow a lot of pills throughout the day. In terms of sheer magnesium content, no other form of magnesium can deliver as much with so little, making it a very good choice for anyone who wants to take fewer supplements. This then takes me to the other pros and cons of magnesium oxide. One major advantage of magnesium oxide is its cost. It is one of the cheapest forms of magnesium available, and it is also very widely available, and you can buy it at almost any supermarket. The supermarket magnesium products are usually low quality, but for other reasons like fillers and additives, but not necessarily for the magnesium oxide itself. Now, the one big drawback with magnesium oxide is that its slow absorption rate 
can lead to problems with your GI tract. This is primarily because the magnesium stays longer in your digestive tract where it draws water. So it is a fairly strong laxative when taken in high doses. So this can be a problem for people with sensitive stomachs. Now, with all this in mind, what's my recommendation on magnesium oxide and magnesium in general? In practice, which form of magnesium is best is very individual. A good strategy is to split up your magnesium intake throughout the day. This reduces the likelihood of side effects like diarrhea and make sure that you absorb more of it. I like to combine different forms of magnesium, such as magnesium oxide, glycinate and malate. And this allows you to take advantage of each of the form's benefits. For example, throughout the day, I like to use magnesium oxide because of its buffer effect as the magnesium is so slowly released. And then at night, to help with better sleep, I like to take magnesium glycinate. This kind of makes sure that you get the best of all worlds, steady magnesium levels, fewer side effects and improved overall absorption. It's a very practical way to supplement magnesium based on your body's needs. So the next time you buy a new magnesium supplement, please don't let anyone tell you that you should avoid magnesium oxide. It has some drawbacks, but it also has a lot of benefits. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.